morning. This is Judy Gula from Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria, Virginia. And we are here this morning with our third installment about working with beads and beading on fabric. So um, some of you hopefully have been able to follow along in the first time beading book, which is kind of where we're focusing on. Um, I think it's a wonderful book for um, someone who wants to be learning the new um, tricks and trades with uh, doing fab beading on fabric. So this is really um, a great book to have in your library. Again, even if you're an experienced, the whole idea concept of the reading the creating a book as a sample, I think is is <laughs> worth having the book. So we have, for those of you who have not been following us along, we've created pages in a book with some beading samples on them. I have organza printing on the background and then bead embroidery. And, there, and all the previous videos are on YouTube so you can go back as we talked about some of the other stitches. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna show you is my back. I knot things, I bury my threads a couple of times um, because I definitely want things to be secure. And part of the trick when you're doing bead embroidery is that you knot frequently. So you want that, so okay, so say my stuff gets snagged and um, part of my, my fringe comes off. Well, if I've knotted it, I don't lose it all. I just lose some of it. So not frequently as is one of my terms. All right, and then this is the page that we're gonna work on today. So I finished my Pico stitch on the top. So you can see I did all kinds of miscellaneous beads, which is different than what my other signature had. I worked with the um, bugle beads here. I showed you how to use a stencil to create some vining. Those stencils are really wonderful. Um, then we're gonna talk about fringe today, and we're gonna talk about backstitch today, which is here, okay? And then we'll uh, give you some ideas for our last installment, which will be next Saturday at 9.30. So, let's see. I have threaded some needles. And um, Margaret, I know, was talking about backstitch, that she likes backstitch rather than couching. So if we look here, this is a backstitch, and this is couched. What I see as the differences um, are that this gives me a straighter line. It allows me to keep things, and I can do it for miscellaneous beads in different shapes. They don't all have to be the same size. It just happens to be what I did on this page. I wanted to echo the wrought iron. Becky wants to know about the stencils that we talked about in the last video. The stencils um, are Just by used. Kristen Brown. So what they, she created them for hand stitching. So what I did was I took that and there's a stencil that allowed me to draw and I just drew in pencil because I was gonna cover it, this vining. So rather than stitching it with thread, I stitched it with beads. So it's a pack, um, they're about this big. They're great, they're easy to use. Lots of, uh, of pattern ideas. I think that that's the biggest thing. So they translated from hand stitching with threads to beading. Um, and they're Kristen Browns and they're great. We do have them in stock. Um, she's, this book is absolutely wonderful. We did a nice blog post uh, in our um, archives that talks about how we did a book review for her and did a project out of it and, and some great information. Wonderful, wonderful book. Very, very beautiful. All right, so now I, and, and we talked about, if you wanna work with a double thread, that's okay, that's good, that's on the safe side. 
This is um, just an, an overhand knot that I did at the end. And I am going to... And you're using silamide today? I'm, I'm using silamide today. And, you know, I kind of take a stitch to tack it down. So that's the other thing that helps keep it tight also, is that, you know, I come up and I stitch. So now I'm gonna take four beads. And no, I don't care what color they are. As long as I can get four on here, I'll be doing good. And this is this awesome light and magnifier that we have, um, which has been absolutely wonderful. All right, so I have four here. That's like this. Then I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna come up to back. And I'm gonna go through here. Okay, so I have four and I, I'm gonna put four more on there. And they don't have to be um, as I said, they can be all kinds of different sizes. You can use them. Um, could have easily done this on the vine. So here's four beads. You can pull it kind of tight. So um, let me see if I can, part of it is my, so I'm holding the thread with my finger. I'm pulling my needle and snugging it up. And then I'm gonna go back to and it's and then go back through. See, it, it gives me a nice clean line. So one more time. Where are my magnifiers? Okay, four beads. Come here, snug it up a little bit. I'm gonna go down right at the end and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna go back through two beads. So that's, that is what they call a back stitch. And so you can use that. And I did do the back stitch all around the curl <laughs> it's a little trickier, but it works really nicely. And I find that it gives you a straighter edge than maybe here. So interchangeably, one is quicker than the other, I think. Um, but that that's what I see as the difference. All right. So let me pull this out here. Are you stitching down into the fabric after the four beads? Yes, yes, I, good question. I am going through the, from the top to the bottom, and then, so I'm taking a little bit of a back stitch, but I am going through the fabric and coming up back through the fabric to get to the beads. Yes, absolutely. And why is selamide so hard to find? Well, I've been actually trying to find it and I am willing to manufacture it myself. <laughs> but I found out that it actually is trademarked and regulated by a company called YLI. So if you would like it, they sell wholesale only. Um, please email him and ask him when he's gonna make it because they control it. Um, so we would like, I'd like more. I find that the NIMO shreds a little bit um, and I usually don't use an additive on my threads. It's just one of those things I kind of just never did. Um, so we're gonna get Thread Heaven to work with the NIMO because the NIMO is much easier to get a hold of. But that's why I like the difference. I find that the Silamide doesn't um, shred whereas the NIMO does. So you need that. And Madeline made a comment that when you finish your back stitch line that you can go back through all of the stitches to help maintain the line straight. Just oh, her, her, her own comment. Mm -hmm. Great suggestion, thank you. That is good. And is it like a small quilt and you're going all the way through or 
the top in batting? Um, when, again, I, I'm not creating, you know, Houston judge-worthy quilts. I'm, I'm creating for my pleasure, for samples, to show you what you can do. So a lot, many times, I will use buttons and beads to embellish a quilt. I will do it after the fact. After I have done my stitching, after I have done my quilting, my bindings on and everything, so yes, I go through to the back. If I can just pick up the batting, sure, but most of the time I don't worry about it. I am, I am want my embellishments to be secured. So Can you show on this one? Yes. So here, I have no clue what this thread is and I don't recommend it, whatever it is. So what she did was she has these little, so she's done her quilting and then put these little pops of color in here to accentuate the quilting. And then you can see it comes um, through the back. So I think, I think that that's okay. And when I personally do my pieces, I actually do my stitching and beading on a bat piece of felt behind my top. And then I put a batting and a, and a, and then a, a envelope or right. backing on it. Right. So I think it's personal preference and how you're going to present your work. And also whether you have a plan <laughs> or whether you say, oh, it needs something afterwards. Yeah. Don't be afraid to add it. So, um, yeah, it does, it does work both ways. And I work both ways. I like that idea as well. But um, normally I don't, I don't have a plan. <laughs> I have a loose plan. <laughs> No, you have a finished piece that needs something, and you yeah. add beads to it afterwards. Yeah. yeah, so don't hesitate to do that just because you think it's finished and completed because do it through the back. Um, okay, well, good, all great questions. Any, anyone have any other questions? And Ellen says that Nemo stretches more than silamide, so when using Nemo, she stretches it before stitching so she gets some of the stretch out. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, awesome. That's great. Good. Now we're now we're knowing why I like silamide better. <laughs> so let's get a manufacture silamide campaign going on Facebook. Because um, I I really it's I don't it, it amazes me. Um, this quilt here this is some more um, stacking. But what I wanted to show you is that I use the beads. This is needle felted background. This is a felted sweater that I cut out and I just, um, I probably, <laughs> maybe? Yeah, okay, I did. <laughs> this one had a plan. Um, I, so I did my beading on this piece first and then I, um, I did the stitching on the wool in the background and then I added the squares. And you can see I kind of did those loosely on the top. So those are almost like stitch meditations. Yeah, little individual stitch meditations. So I really, and the needle felting was a great texture combined with the um, cotton. So what I did is I, I did show this on a previous Facebook Live. So I had done this hand stitching here and these are great kits from um, that have been created. Wonderful is one of the products who Spargo designed some. Wendy, Rich, uh, Wendy Williams did the other ones. So we have some of those from her as well. And then we have this wonderful book that has great, great butterflies by our buddy Catherine Redmit, Redford. And this is wonderful. Can you imagine? She did all of this with stitching, but how about if we added beads to that? How about if we use beads instead? I think she's got beads. And on she's the... got some Pico beads in there. So absolutely great ideas. But this is just an edging, a Pico edging that I did on this one. Um, again, all mixed beads. And I found, so what I found here was when you're doing the edging, I actually had to bring my needle up back here because my edge was not strong enough to hold these beads. So I came onto this side of the stitching, but I buried it in the thread. So you can't see my silamide there, but I'm not right at the edge like I am on my book. 
that was just one thing I learned about the wool that it's a softer edge to stitch so you need a little bit more to stabilize it all right great questions okay now we are going to look at some fringes generally Fringes to me is a great way to add a lot of extra beads and um, make things kind of funky with it. Um, there's fringes here. So I have a stitch to fabric bead and I came up through it. And this is my knot that's holding all of this fringe. I did it. And as you can see, it's all different lengths. It's interesting, but basically it is a thread with beads. I have a stop bead at the bottom, and then I come back up through. These are some, um, this is a book and we'll show it to you I'm a little bit later, but I wanna show you the fringe here. These are some ideas from, from the book, First Time Beading, that has to do with fringing. So this is kind of a viney one, and I'll show you that. Um, here and here and then these are using some um, this is a good technique so you can see the beads on the other side of the leaf I always kind of forget to do that one so here that is too so this is hiding your thread and then look at this fringe on the side that she did this book is from um, Linda Morgan and she loaned it to us so I could show it to you today. These are some other fringes. You know, when we used to read books, we needed bookmarks. We still read books. I know, but you don't need, most people don't need bookmarks anymore. So here's these, I used to sell these little bookmarks, but you can see, I just used to sit and do all of this fringe. So lots and lots of ideas about fringing. So let's show you what we're doing here. Um, have my Christine, you probably need to refresh your whatever uh, app you're on. She lost her video. Uh oh. Okay. So so these are pretty straightforward. These, you're gonna put some beads on a thread. You're gonna have a, a um, piece, a bead that's going to anchor it. See here, it's a small one. Here's this one. So those are pretty easy to do. So. So I'm coming along the back. I would say don't cut your thread each time you finish a fringe, I would continue. Um, Cause that just keeps the thread strengthened. So. Here's that. I'm going to use my little heart. All right, so here's my fringe. Here's my stop bead. So I'm going to come back here. All the way up. I'm going to hold this. And there's my fringe that way. And I can make sure I knot it. And I'm gonna come up here. And I am just using a single thread. Okay, so let's try this viney one. Uh, 
Some people like using the longer needles. I like shorter needles. I don't know, maybe it's more like sewing and it gives me a little more control. This one you want pretty long. Okay, I can tell you I just made a mistake, but we're gonna keep on going, but I'm gonna tell you what the mistake is. So, all my beading is coming up on the top. I left my thread on the bottom. So, it's gonna look different, which under normal circumstances doesn't bother me, but for the purposes of showing you, I was trying to be up on the top, okay? So that, that's my mistake there. Okay, let's see. We want no mistakes, learning opportunities. Yep, here you go. And I'll, I'll always share those with you. Okay, so here is this is what we have. We have this, we have a larger bead here, and we have our stop bead. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, say right there. And I'm going to create my first line. All right. See, this is what happens. This stuff shreds. Just makes me a little nutty. I need all the help I can get. Okay, so I'm here. This, here's my stop, my big bead and my stop bead. So I'm gonna go. Oh no, I lost my needle. That's not gonna be pretty. I see Suzanne said it's good to see the top bottom difference. Would have never thought it made a difference. Yep. Okay, the pressure's on. Ah, it splits. I guess this this is where beeswax comes in handy. As soon as I try to get it through that needle. So the other thing you say is if you can't get it through the needle, you need a bigger needle, but. Sorry guys. I stopped filming it so you. There you go. You, that should have taken the pressure off. Let's see. There's so many other interesting things to see besides me trying to thread a needle. All right, the piece that Chris is showing you now is a piece created by Rosalie Lamana, who had Beads Limited, who has since closed and retired. And that is one of her pieces. Um, she also did a fabulous panel, which was included in um, our book, um, Boutique Panels, which we have in the back. It's life. Um, so she, this is all, she took a panel and cut it apart and then she beaded each piece, you can see, and then she did some stitching on it and then she sewed it back together. It's, it's, it, it's absolutely fantastic. 
So this is a woman who worked with beads for 30 years. So <laughs> we can aspire. All right, we got a threaded needle. Thread's a little short now because <laughs> I had to cut it, um, but we got it. So we have enough to do a, one more vine, okay? So I'm gonna come here. Bead, it's in here somewhere. See, this is why I like these bead mixes because I can get all the beads I need. All right, so here's your stop bead, here's the larger bead, here's part of my vine. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna continue up because I am running out of thread. And I always want to have enough to make a knot. So I'm just gonna bring my threads up here. So here's your kind of viney one. And let's just make sure it's in there. You can see that wonderful fancy knot I do. And then I just am going to bury because I've knotted it. And this is kind of my loop knot. Nothing fancy, but it seems to work. Okay, see, we're out of thread. So the question is, are the beads in your boxes what comes in the bead mix or you have added more to your box? Uh, no, pretty much I use, um, this is the bead mixes. You can tell um, I use mostly what's in the, the bead mixes. So is this equal to one of these? Um, I don't remember. I think last I think week we, we did. showed that you had added some beads yeah, to some, it. Yeah, sometimes I need, um, oh, there we go. Open one up and check. Yeah, <laughs> so I have my bead mixes in those trays that are the hardware. So you have the plastic things and then you have trays. Because uh, I don't keep them in tubes like this. This is what you commonly see in bead stores. So they have a tube and they have a number on it, what size it is, what type it is. And, um, but I don't keep them like this very often. Um, I end up putting them on those trays. So those trays are gonna be um, much more than these containers are. So let's see, we have them sealed. We'll do a test for you. I then go, if once I reach past this size, I then go to this size for portability. But most of the time I'm working out of my tray from my hardware container. Okay. So. Pretty much. Yeah. This is this is what. It and this is. definitely gives you enough variety to work with yes. is a bead mix. Exactly. So as I work and as I expand, uh, you know, as I said, I am working in larger containers in these bead mixes, but I'm always starting with these bead mixes. This is, this is always where I've started. This is how I've operated for years, um, is to, to work with these bead mixes and add or expand, which uh, you're welcome to do that. So make them, you know, have it be your, what is it, sourdough. You always have a starter for sourdough. So this is your starter and then you can add to it. But I, I love these jars because I do take beading when I travel. I have a little plastic container that has a latch on it um, because we, we have had beads get loose and um, it's not a pleasant experience. So if I can save you from that experience, I'm happy to do that. Uh, so, you know, I try to use things that are very secure that if I'm, I'm limiting my loss on beads. 
Good questions. And what are you using as your your work piece here today? This is a piece of um, ultra suede that I we we actually sell these in the store. I don't know that we have them online, but they're pieces of ultra suede, and it has a tendency to dictate my space. Um, a lot of times when I'm at home, I'll have my tray. So again, I've contained them in because if I, they run loose, they're in the tray. So those are just some things I do um, to try and control where the beads go and hopefully the recovery process <laughs> is better than on my floor. So those are, you know, I think pretty inexpensive ways to help you. Some people have used corduroy. So, cause when you have corduroy, you have lines. And so the beads can stay within those lines. That's another good one. And when we have a foam mat, um, we used to be able to, they, you know, they had a beading mat, they had uh, sticky beads, that type of thing. So that's um, good. Kyle, can you get my Kleenex, please? All right. Do you have your trays in your holder or is that at home? You didn't bring that with you? Um, I did. So this is um, a couple of things that I have learned along the way. Um, the trays, if you buy them all the same size, instead of going to the thrift store and finding what's available, <laughs> and you, they stack better. So that's a saving, you know, because of course we're trying to compress as much art supplies as possible into a space. Um, this is, you know, latches. But I would even suggest one of those ones that are, I think it's Sterlite or whatever, that has the locking latch. Um, these, when we receive these bead containers, we get these plastic pieces. Um, I don't really know what to do with them. If you're in the store and you want one, tell us, we'll give them to you. Um, email us if you want it and we'll put it in your next order but th these containers are empty and they come with 12 of these so that's what we're buying to package our beads and of course the lid is double duty because it's a surface that you can add beads to and it goes like this and closes so then I have generally my thread in one, which you can see I've inherited a lot of thread. This is this thread heaven, which to me, this stuff dries out, I don't know. Does anybody use this? What do they think of it? Do they like it? Yeah, thumbs up? Okay, that's, that's good to know because that probably would have saved me some grief. And then, I have, we used to get these, but there was no, no response to them, so we've stopped. But, um, so these are the smaller ones. So what happens is if I'm traveling and I'm going away, I always have to take something with me. So this becomes, I take these colors out of my trays, I fill these up out of my trays, and then I, um, you know, it fits very nicely this way. So we've got two comments that some people use beeswax and exactly. others use micro crystalline wax. Okay, awesome. Thank you. We'll look into that because I'm not really wild about that thread heaven stuff. Beeswax actually, I think I inherited some of that from Rosalie, so I will find that. Um, great. Thank you very much. So then I have that. Um, this, this, scissors. You know, so then now I have my tray, and, I, and this is how I'm bringing this back and forth to work, is everything is on my tray. All my beads are contained in jars with screw lids or something like that, and then I, I go back and forth to here. Does that give you an idea? Is that good? All right, so here's my miracle light that I am like so addicted to. And I think we, we, I think you guys have all jumped on this and I highly, highly recommend it. So it's a magnifier here on the top. And if you just need the light, you have the light underneath here. But 
it's the only way I can thread those needles. So now I, I'm like so happy. You heard me grumbling a little bit, but it, it really makes a great thing. It's portable, small. Um, these, I have these trays that I take with me all the time. These um, are from airline food when you go overseas. Um, and don't take them without asking the steward or the stewardess because I put some in my purse and the steward came back and asked me for them. He got mad at me that I took them without asking. So don't do that to them. You want to be nice to them. This is the other thing that a friend of mine told me about. These are glass corn cob, vintage corn cobs holders. And so they make a nice uh, tray also. And it's got an end that usually makes things easier to pour. Um, I'm still working on sourcing these trays. I know that it shouldn't be that hard. Um, so we'll, I will add those to the, the um, website when we get them. Okay, beading needles. So these are tulip beading needles. I will tell you I used John James for years. They sell them very inexpensively. It's 25 in a pack and they bend and they they bend very very quickly. And I'm not doing any beading on very heavy materials. I love these beading noodles. Yes, they are a little pricey. They come in four different sizes. Highly highly recommend them. I, they are so much better than anything else that's out there. We have them in stock. Um, bead reamer, again, they make it nice hand or ergonomically here. Um, I, this is a great tool to have. Will help you, you know, sometimes there's little bits of glass or whatever that's in there that, that blocks your hole. And, you know, it's a really great bead. You don't want to get rid of the bead. So you just, you know, you can punch it out. So it works really well. Tools, tools. Um, all right, anybody have any other questions about tools and setup? All right, one more thing I wanna show you. Okay, so before we show, I'm gonna show you Linda's book in a minute. We're running out of time, but one of the things I wanna show you is my fringe, nothing is the same. So Rosalie taught this fabulous class with doing a purse and beading the fringe. So what happens if I want my fringe to be a specific size? So to me, I would, so what she did was she did, she made a dangle. And if somebody has a better idea. So what I would do is you can get a pin board. They're, um, they sell them in beading stores. Some people have used empty bolts of fabric. So if I want my fringe to be shaped, I'm going to draw my shape and so you can see it come through here. So then I would do my beading with this. So it's going to tell me where I want my fringe and how I want it to dangle. Um, just an idea. I haven't done that, but it's a good idea. All right. We'll post a picture later. <laughs> yes. Chris has a fabulous bead book that she did. So let me show you um, Linda Morgan's book. So this is what we're working towards. This is what is uh, from the first time beading. So this is what we're gonna work on next week is actually um, this peyote stitch is to hold this piece down um, and then she's embellished it. So this is her cover. Here's her fabulous fringe. Look at, she's got all kinds of different types of fringe. And then she's even done some really cool stuff up here. Um, makes it very neat and pretty. Here she's done some different types of stitching. Look at her beautiful black and white heart. That's her monogram. Yep, and, look, and she always has to have her cat, her kitty. So this is her front, which you really wanna look at. So, and I have some ideas and suggestions for fronts. Always looking for faces, but um, 
we have, you know, what about a watch face? We have these vintage pieces that are from jewelry manufacturers. This is a stone, a piece of a pin, a button, a face. So these are just some of the things that I thought would be interesting as a, as a cover. So then you open up here and she's decorated her inside cover. She's probably hidden her stitching, which is all good. And then you can print these out that talk about what the pattern was that she did and how do you do it next time. And it's created in this little pocket, so it's double-sided. So here's the moss stitch, and here's your moss stitch. Here's her example of couching, and here's her couching instruction. See, look, she did her little edges also. This is her back stitch, working with bugles. Her edging, again, these edges are beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Stacking. Fringe, you saw that one. But again, look at her edges. Her fringe on her edges are fantastic. And then these are her faces. So this is a peyote stitch that's going to hold this down. What are these called? Con con conch? There's a special word for this. Who knows what that is? It starts with a C. Um, somebody online knows what it is. So it doesn't have a back. It's a flat back, and it has a rounded surface. And so those are really known, um, familiar with using this peyote stitch to hold it down. Look, she used a coin. So the stitching around these pieces are holding them down. Cabochons. Thank you, cabochons. That was the word. Perfect. Then um, she has her stitching here. And if you look at how she's done her cards, she's got her fringe all on here and she's decorated her tags as well. So Linda, thank you so, so much for sharing your book. This is absolutely, this is an inspiration. I'm gonna finish mine. It's so thank you so much. Um, so it is awesome. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you real quick that's unrelated to anything we've done today except for beads is that we have done some beading where this is a wooden block print and I've done some beading to accent that print. So, you know, wood blocks, we always have to work them in there somewhere. What else do we have? So we talked about Rosalie's piece here. This is Rosalie also. Her business was called Beads Limited, so you can see her fringe, and she's used this, this is a great idea, she's used these little white beads here to cover your thread and give those dangles a little bit of length. I think that's pretty cool. Um, here's some more fringe up here. All right. Um, this piece I did quite a while ago. Um, I created the fabric, printed it and dyed it, um, actually painted it and stamped it. And this started the whole thing. That This whole piece was based on this pen and you can see where that, and I, I'm sure all of these beads came from Rosalie's spot. So, um, and then these are wood flowers, which are great. So those are lots and lots of fringes. Here's some stitching. There's actually some beading in here that's kind of loose on the sides that would just couch down if you can see that. It's funny what you find when you look in a box. All right, are there um, any other questions? Everybody's been asking them all along, so that's really awesome. We um, had a, a great Thursday night um, third Thursday of the month where we had a live sale with some special boxes. It went fabulous. So um, we, again, third Thursday is that. Um, I actually have my Italy dress on today. I've been wearing my India clothes. So in, there is a, a trip planned for September 2022 to Italy and we will be partnering with Liz Kettle. And so we'll get some more information on that. I know the world is still a little shaky, but we're making plans. We are, we're making plans and setting goals. So this will be posted on YouTube. 
please join us on Facebook. Also, we have Artistic Artifacts Creative Minds on Facebook. That is for our continuation of our community. Please post what you're working with, what you've made with what you've bought from us. Be able to ask questions and be part of our community here, even though you're not in Alexandria. So thank you. Time to open the store. See you later.